Hi there, Mr. Richards here in today's Grade 6, Unit 3, Lesson 6, Practice Problems Review is on Interpreting Rates. And Question 1. A pink paint mixture uses 4 cups of white paint for every 3 cups of red paint. The table shows different quantities of red and white paint for the same shade of pink. Complete the table. Well, let's just take this step by step. From 3 to 1, we're dividing by 3. You could also say you're multiplying by one-third, but either way you get four-thirds here. And I know some of us might be tempted to use the decimal form, which would be 1.3 repeating, or the one decimal point three with the bar over the three. Do not round that to 1.3. It's not 1.3. Or is it one and three-tenths? You got to have the bar over the uh, three to symbolize that three goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Now, what about the four? To get that down to a one, we're dividing by four. And so now we're going to take three and divide that by four, and we'll get three-fourths. And I know some of us want to write down the fraction, which is 75 hundredths, and that's okay, too. Now, what about this next step? This 1. Hmm. 1 to 4. 1 to 4. 1 to 4. Let's take the 1 and multiply it by 4, which would mean we're going to take the 4 thirds and multiply that by 4 to get 16 thirds or some equivalent version of 16 thirds. I mean, if you wanted to write 5 and 1 thirds, that, that is the same as is 5 decimal point 3 repeating, not 5.3, not 5.3, not 5.3, just 5 decimal point 3 repeating, if you absolutely need to write the decimal form. Now, to get to 5, let's use the white paint where we have 1. We'll multiply that by 5 which means we're going to multiply this 3 fourths by 5, which makes that 15 fourths, which is the same thing as 3 and 3 fourths, which is the same thing as 3 and 75 hundredths. All right, that's a lot of loop-de-loops and squares and blues and reds. Let's continue on to question two. A farm lets you pick three pints of raspberries for $12. What is the cost per pint? Well, our cost is $12 for three pints. That's to get to one pint, we need to divide by three. And 12 divided by three is $4.00. Per pint. What about the pints per dollar? Well, that's a little bit different. We still know that it is three pints for twelve dollars. And if I'm trying to get this to one dollar, we're going to need to divide by twelve. And three divided by twelve. You could just get a decimal form of that, which would be 0 0.25 pints. Now, the fraction form of that is one-fourth. So basically, basically, you can get a quarter pint for a dollar. Now, how many pints can you afford for $20? Well, we're given the dollars here. And we're looking for the pints. Now, one thing that we practiced in my classroom is that we set up a table here to help us figure out which unit rate is the best to use. And so we started by plugging in our two unit rates, $4 for one pint or $1 for the one-fourth of a pint, or 25 hundredths of a pint. And then we're going, okay, where am I trying to go? 
I'm trying to get to $20 and to fill in this pints. So, what do we need to do there? What makes most sense? To go from 4 to 20 or to go from 1 to 20? And of course, what we've been using is taking our unit rate here of 1 to 20 by multiplying by 20. And so 25 hundredths times 20 is 5. So you can get 5 pints. At this rate, how much will 8 pints of raspberries cost? Well, that's a different question now, isn't it? Here, we're going to look for 8 pints. Well, what makes the most sense? Using our 25 hundredths of a pint or our 1 pint? And I hope that you're recognizing, oh, I'm given pints, so I'm going to use the 1 pint to get down to the 8 pints. And we're going to multiply by 8. And so we'll take our 4 and multiply it by 8 to get to $32. So 8 pints is going to cost $32. And the table is a great way of setting that up, especially if you're following along with it. Question 3. Oh, Han and Tyler, they're following up recipe that uses five cups of water for every two cups of cornmeal. Han says, I'm using three cups of water. I need one and one-fifth cups of cornmeal. Tyler says, I am using three cups of cornmeal. I will need seven and a half cups of water. Do you agree with either of them? And, well, as always, explain your reasoning. We had something similar to this in our activities on this lesson. and Both uh, people were correct. And spoiler alert, both are going to be correct again. I think tables are just a wonderful tool. I mean, you can write things on them. You can build things. You can have a meal on a table. But, of course, this kind of table, we're talking about setting up water and cornmeal. And so, we have five cups of water for two cups of cornmeal. Now, if we break this down into our two unit rates, one cup of water, well, that's by dividing by five, right? That's going to be two fifths cups of cornmeal, which again is the same thing for you guys who love decimals as four tenths. Or we could look at the other unit rate with one cup of cornmeal. And that was done by dividing the two by two. So if we take five divided by two, we get five halves. Do I need to? Yeah, fine. Two and five tenths, two and a half. All right, now, to get to see what in the world is going on here, Han is saying, I am using, in that voice, I'm sure, I'm using three cups of water. And he comes up with one and one-fifth cup of cornmeal. Well, how does he do that? Well, he's taking this unit rate of one and multiplying by three. So if you take the two-fifths and also multiply that by 3, you would get 6 fifths. Hey, he's wrong! Not really. 6 fifths simplifies to 1 and 1 fifth, so there you go. Now, Han is right. So we can skip it and move on, right? I'm wrong. Tyler. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. Tyler's using 3 cups of cornmeal. That's a 3 here. Fine. That means we're going to use this unit right here with one cup of cornmeal. We'll multiply this now by three, which means we need to multiply the five halves, or two and a half, by three, and we get 15 halves. Wrong again! Wait a minute. 15 halves simplifies to seven and a half. He's right, too. And as I said in the spoiler, if you were listening, they're both correct. Question four. See, this is what happens after having a night of conferences and recording a third video in one night. You get a little punchy. A large art project requires enough paint to cover 1,750 square feet. 
Each gallon of paint can cover 350 square feet. Each square foot requires 1 350th of a gallon of paint. All right, if you say so. Andre thinks he should use the rate 1 350th gallon of paint per square foot to find how much paint they need. Do you agree with Andre? Well, I guess you, you could or you couldn't. I mean, it depends on how you want to look at this. And again, if we look at a table, a table, a table, a table, gallons and square feet, you need to get to 1,750 square feet. Now, our two unit rates were given here is that one gallon of paint can cover 350 square feet and that each square foot requires one and three hundred or one and three hundred fiftieths gallons. It's always fun when you're talking about gallons and that's kind of fraction, but we're trying to get to one thousand seven hundred fifty square feet. And everything we've been doing so far says, well, you're going to use that unit rate which you're given. If you're given square feet, then yes, you would take 1 and multiply by 1,750 and take the 1 and 350ths and multiply by 1,750 to get a solution of 5, 5 gallons. So if you like that, you could say you agree. There is an argument to be made on the disagree side, um, you could say, well, I just don't want to use a fraction that's 1 in 350. It's I'd rather figure out a table and something to do with that table that doesn't involve 1 in 350. And so you could say, I'm going to make my own table. You know, I, Mr. Richard, you're showing me it makes sense. I get it. But at this point, that's just really too difficult of a fraction to use. And first, no fraction is too difficult to use, but I understand if you don't want to use it. You can say, I'm getting to 1,750 my way. Well, what's your way? Well, I know that I'm multiplying this by 5. Well, how do you know that? Well, I took 1,750 and divided by 350 to get 5. So I can just take 1 times 5, and that's a terrible 5, but that's a little better, to get 5 gallons. So I disagree with Andre because I like my way better, and I'm stubborn, and there we go. Well, you know what? It does work. And so you could agree if you like the red reasoning, or you could disagree if you like the blue reasoning. And as long as you explain or show your reasoning, you'd be right. Now, Andre, after, you know, painting, types 208 words in four minutes. His friend Noah types 342 words in six minutes. Who types faster? Let's find out how many words they're typing in a minute, shall we? 208 words in four minutes for Andre. If we get this to minutes, and by minutes I mean one minute, and we take 208 and divide it by four, we get 52 words per minute. It's a pretty good typing, right? Not as good as me. I think I'm in the 60s or 70s at this point, but nah, it's neither here nor there. I'd like to have a shout out towards my keyboarding teacher when I was in high school. We actually did it on typewriters, which was kind of fun. Can't even find a typewriter these days. Anywho, 342 words over six minutes. You're going to divide by six to get to one minute. And so you'll divide the 342 by six. And yet a total of 57 words per one minute. And 57 words per one minute is bigger than and faster and stronger than 52 words per one minute. So 57 words per minute is our solution. And that winner, winner, chicken dinner is Noah. Question six. A corn vendor at a farmer's market was selling a bag of six ears of corn for $2.50. Another vendor was selling a bag of 12 for $4.32. Which bag is the better deal? Explain or show your reasoning. Let's get this to a unit rate. Let's get this to one ear of corn. 
So we have two dollars and fifty six cents for eight ears. I wonder why they ever came up with ears of corn. I wonder if anyone's still listening. Ears listening. Yeah. If you were listening, you're probably muting the sound now. Anywho, if we get these down to one ear. In this first one, we need to divide the two dollars and fifty six cents fifty six cents by eight. And two dollars and fifty six cents divided by eight is thirty two cents per ear of corn. We're dividing the last one here by twelve. And four dollars and thirty two cents divided by twelve is going to be thirty six cents an ear. And unless you like paying more for the same thing, which some people do, I don't get it, but 32 cents per ear of corn is your solution if, you know, you know, assuming that the corn is the same. That is the better deal and, and these types of questions. That's all you really care about is saving money. A soccer field is 100 meters long. What could its length be in yards? Yards and meters are pretty close to each other. They're not exact, though. Um, a meter is just a little bit bigger than a yard and so you need a few more yards uh, to take up for that and so since the meter is just a little bit bigger than a yard you're going to need to go with D and <laughs> thank goodness that is it for this grade 6 unit 3 lesson 6 practice problems review on interpreting rates. Oh boy, good luck.